Hello, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. If I look a little tired, it's because I am. Unfortunately, my eight month old baby has a severe ear infection. And so she hasn't been sleeping very well the past couple nights. She's being treated for it now. And she's sleeping so much better, the poor dear. Um, we actually didn't even realize that she had an ear infection. Um, I guess it was happening on the inside um, a lot longer than there were noticeable signs on the outside. She never had a fever, and during the day she wasn't more fussy than normal or anything like that. She's a very easygoing baby, um, but she just stopped sleeping very well at night. Again, she wasn't crying, nothing like that. She was just waking up quite a bit. Um, and so anyway, I'm a little exhausted. I think I'm gonna start getting some better sleep now that she is getting better sleep, but I apologize for my appearance right now. I'm just a little tired. So I am coming to you today, and for you guys who are new here, thanks so much for joining me. This is my third baby, and things just seem to move so much more quickly. I, of course, combined the 11 and 12 weeks because they were pretty much the same. And honestly, um, you guys saw my 10-week update. 10 weeks was just really, really hard. 11 weeks was better. It was much better. Um, the I still have the headaches and the nausea. I'm puking four to five times a day. <laughs> I'm a pregnancy puker. That's just something that happens. Um, but I'm noticing that instead of just feeling really lousy all day, I will have a window of like two to three, somewhere between two and four, sometimes even five hours where I feel kind of like myself again, like I have a little bit of energy, and it's always between the hours of like two and six, um, or maybe like three and seven, um, but like clockwork, every single day at eight, 8.30, I start to feel really, really lousy, I hit a wall, whatever I'm doing physically like has to be stopped, and I have to sit down, lay down, whatever. Um, the the nausea and the headaches go hand in hand. I usually don't have one without having the other. And um, it's actually pretty severe when it comes on. Um, I have to lay down, sit down for about 20, 30 minutes, something like that, to get myself to a place where I can function again. Um, I've noticed if I try to power through, it just gets continuously worse. Um, and then I start having other physical symptoms like um, I'll start feeling really out of breath or I'll start feeling really, really dizzy. And so I have found that whenever I start to feel really lousy, it's actually best if I don't just power through. I know a lot of women have said, you know, power through pregnancy. I've always heard that. That has never been the case with me. Um, Cause a lot of women, when they start feeling really lousy with pregnancy, if They've said that if they just power through, they'll feel better. That has never, not in three pregnancies now, been the case with me. So if that's not the case with you, don't try to let other people project on you things that should work for your pregnancy just because it worked for them. You know, you can try to power through and if it does work and you feel better, great. But if you start to feel worse, give yourself a break you might have more severe pregnancy sickness than they did. And um, the case with me has been that I've had much more severe pregnancy sickness than most of the people that I've been around. So if you fall into that same category, just, just give yourself a break. I have two young kids. It's sometimes hard, um, but even something like going outside, and we have a fenced in yard, so I'll just go outside with the girls and my eight month old is really entertained outside. You know, she just loves being outside. And then my two year old just runs around like crazy and that's really entertaining. And I just sort of sit there and watch them for a while. <laughs> and that's really helpful. So, but other than that, you know, I'm just really thankful to be feeling somewhat better. Um, I don't get sick all day, every day anymore. Um, I do occasionally, like during the middle of the day, I noticed in weeks 11 and 12, there were a couple days here and there, there were really anomalies where 
suddenly in the middle of the day I would get a really severe headache, I'd suddenly get really nauseous, and I would have that same um, debilitating feeling where I'm like, I have to sit or lay down for a little while until this passes. Um, it always passes after about 20 or 30 minutes. It at least gets better to where it's not so debilitating. Um, but it's mostly like first thing in the morning and then 8.30 and on at night. Um, very rarely does that happen in the middle of the day, but it does sometimes happen. Now as far as other symptoms go, I'm sleeping a little bit better at night. I don't have such severe insomnia like I had before. Um, I'm going to sleep somewhere around 12 and 1 and that's actually really good. <laughs> A lot of you know if you've been watching my other um, my other updates that insomnia has been a real issue like I've been going to sleep anywhere from like 2 to 4 and that's with really trying to sleep um, it just wasn't working <laughs> and that's been the case with every pregnancy I've had as well it it really takes basically getting out of the first trimester in order for me to be able to sleep normally again and not have such severe insomnia. It's just, that's just the way that it is. Insomnia is a part of pregnancy for a lot of women. A new symptom is that I've had some issues with my vision. Now this did not happen with my first pregnancy, but it did happen with my second pregnancy. And um, I find myself, especially if I'm looking at my phone or really any type of screen, um, I'll feel the need to like blink and, <laughs> you know, the typical thing someone does whenever they feel like their eyes just aren't quite adjusting. I do that all the time. I was actually doing this so much during my second pregnancy whenever I was, I'm a therapist for those of you who are new here, and so I was seeing clients like 10 hours a day um, during my second pregnancy. And um, a lot of my clients would be like, do you wanna borrow my glasses? Because <laughs> they would see me staring at the screen and I would just go, <laughs> trying to focus, because my eyes just would not adjust. Um, and yeah, a lot of them offered me their glasses. <laughs> And um, as soon as I hit about, I want to say like 18, 19 weeks, most of that went away. It did eventually go away. It would come and go with pregnancy. Pregnancy is great like that. These random things will just come and go. <laughs> but um, I never felt the need. I, I did actually get reading glasses. I invested in some like Dollar Tree reading glasses or something just to help me with screens um, when I was pregnant with my second daughter. I'm not on the computer like that anymore now, so I don't really think I have a need for those glasses. I don't even know where they are. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the same thing is happening. I'm having those visual changes. Another thing that has happened with both of my other pregnancies is I have just a really weird taste in my mouth. I have a sweet taste in my mouth. Um, and then occasionally water will taste very sweet as well. Again, just a weird thing. It happened with my other two pregnancies and it usually lasts a week, maybe two weeks at the very most and then goes away. Um, I, it hardly ever happens now because I'm about 13 weeks pregnant now. But yeah, that that's always been just a crazy symptom to me. Just out of nowhere, water will start tasting sweet. I'll have a sweet taste in my mouth. And it's something that happens when I'm pregnant. Physically, I still can't do a lot of the things that I normally can do, even though I am feeling more like myself in certain parts of the day. Um, and I am feeling a little bit better. Um, I physically cannot do anywhere close to what I would normally do. Like, uh, normally, if the house is a wreck, I could just spend an entire day cleaning, you know. Beginning of the day to end of day, I would get someone to help me with my kids and I would just spend the entire day catching up, even two days of doing that, you know. And it would be nothing. I'm typically a really energetic person. I haven't been able to do that. Honestly, like a couple of hours is my limit. I'll get really out of breath. I'll start feeling really dizzy 
and I just have to take it easy. A lot of the first trimester I have found for me is just taking it easy, which makes sense because you're making really important things. You know, your baby starts out as a tadpole and by the end of the first trimester, it doesn't have a tail anymore. <laughs> And it has a brain and fingers and eyes and all of that happens in the first trimester. So you're making really important things. I mean, not in, even including the placenta, which is something that you also create in the first trimester. It's just really exhausting for your body. And so it makes sense that, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I normally do. But that's certainly still the case. I'm still having really vivid dreams. I am still having the really paranoid dreams about someone trying to steal my children. Um, I'm noticing that, so when I was pregnant with my first baby, I, and didn't have any kids of course at the time, I would have all of these paranoid baby dreams about something that I was doing to my kids to harm them by accident. Like, I would accidentally leave my, um, my baby carrier on the car or something and then drive off or like I would have the baby in the stroller and it would start like rolling down a hill and I'm trying to chase after her and it's going in a lake or something like that. I would have dreams like that. Just these torturous dreams all the time when I was pregnant with Tennyson. Now I notice that I don't have dreams like that anymore about ways that I'm endangering my kids. <laughs> um, but I'm having dreams about other people endangering them, like people trying to steal my kids, um, people trying to uh, tell me how to raise my kids, or like, no, 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 you don't need to do that. You know, this is what's best for your baby. I've had a lot of dreams about that, actually. I'm not sure what my subconscious is trying to tell me. One of my uh, friends is actually a dream analyst, so I need to check with him. <laughs> but. Yeah, it's, it's really, it switched from the things that I'm paranoid about me doing to, I guess, things I'm paranoid about other people doing. They're very vivid dreams. I'm also having very vivid dreams about my husband and things that he's doing wrong and I wake up really irritated with him. And even though I know he hasn't actually done anything, he still pays the price for it because I get really irritated with him. <laughs> Bless Chad. You guys know how I feel about him. I'm so lucky to have him, but my hormones are getting the best of me, especially first thing in the morning. <laughs> I wake up all the time and I'm like, do you know what I dreamed you did? Why would you do that? Poor guy. So I had the 10 week blood work done. I'm actually not anemic like I have been with most of my pregnancies. I actually think I am but I've been taking supplements because I know what it feels like when I'm running numbers that are anemic. You wanna be at 11 or above, and when they ran my numbers with Adelai for the 10-week blood work, um, I was at, uh, I think, not even nine, it was like eight something, and so I was severely, severely anemic. Some symptoms of anemia, in case you're wondering, are you are incredibly fatigued, more so than normal. Like if you've ever seen that picture of the sloth trying to cross the road, that's what being severely anemic feels like. You just like, you need to get something that's across the room and you're like, oh my gosh, that's such a long way to walk. You are severely, severely lethargic. You get out of breath really easy. Sometimes you might even find it difficult to breathe. That's another symptom. Um, Insomnia is actually another symptom of anemia, and I think one of the most telling symptoms is you'll have pretty intense body aches. I know with, um, like when I was pregnant with Adelai and severely anemic, um, I, I would just lay in bed and my body would hurt so much. In the first trimester, first trimester, second trimester, you know, a, a lot of those body aches are really normal in like the third trimester or sometimes even in the second trimester after, you're, after you start producing relaxin, your muscles around your uterus are not supporting it as well as they normally would. It's totally normal. It's just something that happens and you suddenly start feeling the entire weight of your uterus. 
Um, and so that can cause you to feel really sore and really achy. But feeling abnormally sore and achy is a sign of anemia. And if you definitely feel like, I hurt so bad, I can't get out of bed, and you have the other symptoms, you know, the lethargy, the difficulty breathing, um, and the severe insomnia, you could in fact be anemic. Another symptom is that my head is just extremely foggy. Um, clarity of thought just doesn't seem to be there at all. I'm having a lot of difficulty concentrating. Um, I can't remember dates. I, I don't remember a lot of people's names. <laughs> I experienced this too in the first trimester and I think it's part of just feeling so lousy all the time. It's really difficult to concentrate and it's really difficult for your brain actually to function normally when you feel so awful. It takes energy to concentrate. It takes energy to be efficient in tasks and to use your frontal lobe. Um, and if all your energy is going toward, you know, just surviving, um, that can leave you feeling a little foggy mentally. And that's where I am. I just feel so incredibly foggy. I have mixed up dates so many times, um, even though I will write them down, I'll write something down in the wrong place on my calendar. I'll like write it down on completely the wrong month or um, the wrong year. That's that's something I've been doing too. Like I'll get the date right, but I'll get the year wrong because my calendar goes to the next year as well. Ugh, you guys, sometimes it feels like I just can't win for losing. <laughs> but I know it's going to pass. I just keep trying to be mindful about that. Like I will get my mental capacity back at some point. <laughs> just not right now. <laughs> So as far as the baby is concerned, the baby is great. We don't know what the baby is. We're not going to be finding out what baby is, which is really exciting. Um, I have my 12-week scan right here. Um, they don't normally do a 12-week scan, but um, I got to cheat because they couldn't find Wee One's heartbeat. So I got to go see him or her, whichever on the ultrasound. Look how precious. And let me just say I have another live wire on my hands, you guys. This baby was a total jumping bean. Oh my gosh. It was just, you see how much space the baby has right now. So babies are typically more active when they have all this space. You'll see them moving everywhere, especially like in the 20 week scan. You just see them moving all over the place. It's really, really cute. But the baby was just going pew, pew. You could see its little legs. It was like leaping up. It was so precious, but total jumping bean, um, which is actually why the midwife couldn't find the heartbeat because the little thing wouldn't stay still. <laughs> so as far as what the baby looks like, the eyes and nose have taken shape. You can actually see the little profile, the little nose on the picture I just showed you of the scan. Um, the fingers and toes have connective webbing, so I could actually see fingers and toes and stuff on the scan as well when the baby was like leaping up. Very cute. Um, fingernails are already starting to develop at 12 weeks, which is just crazy to me. And um, teeth buds are forming under the gums, which is also crazy to me since I have an eight month old who still does not have any teeth. <laughs> Um, and the organs and kidneys and intestines, um, or organs like the kidneys and intestines are still growing and developing and maturing at this time. So um, that's basically it. The only other information I have right now is that um, we're deciding right now whether or not we're going to be staying with our OBGYN practice that has delivered our other two babies. Um, or if we're going to use a midwife service at a birthing center. Um, I really wanted a home birth. Chad has made it pretty clear that he's very uncomfortable with that. 
Um, and so we have a couple of birthing centers that have been recommended to us that are right by hospitals or like very, very close to hospitals. And he said that that would actually be fine with him. The main thing for me is that, you know, our hospital, unless you can get the low intervention room, it's just not a very comfortable place to give birth. Um, and as you guys, a lot of you guys know, I got a little ticked off last time that I was in labor and went to the hospital because the low intervention room was being used by someone who wasn't in labor. And it just, I really needed that room. I really needed the tub because that's one of the only rooms with a tub. And so um, I was t I was talking to my midwife about that today actually and she's like, yeah, it, it ticks the midwives off when that room is being used by someone who's not in labor as well because the hydrotherapy is like the whole point of doing the low intervention room like you need that tub and so um, I'm kind of in this place where I just don't even want to risk not being able to have the low intervention room and I'm almost to the place where I would just rather go to a birthing center where I don't even have to think about it like no matter what, I know I'm going to have a room with a tub that can be peaceful, that doesn't have, that doesn't feel sterile, that doesn't have all of this equipment. You guys can see, so I just posted actually the birth of my first daughter not too long ago, um, and that's when I was in the low intervention room. I actually posted that video like years and years before, like three years ago, but because of some licensing changes, not all of the video would play, so I reposted it like last week, I think. And you guys will see that it's a stark contrast between the, that birth, the birth of my first daughter, and the birth of my second daughter. It was so peaceful to give birth to my first daughter in that low intervention room with the tub. I never even wanted an epidural at any point. I never even wanted anything else. It was actually a joy to give birth. I enjoyed it. And then with the second birth, totally different vibe. The room just feels very cold and sterile and I'm in the hospital bed and I couldn't find anywhere to like really put my hands and grab onto when I was having contractions. No tub. I just, it, I really struggled. And you guys know I ended up getting an epidural and regretting it. I didn't like the epidural. But um, yeah, it just, I am heavily affected by my surroundings. So I need to have a place that is, conducive for a gentle, peaceful birth. Otherwise, I'm going to be heavily, heavily anxious, affected, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to feel comfortable. And so I almost, the, the big thing is that we are going to have to pay completely out of pocket for a birth center birth. Now, get this. It's still going to be just about the same amount, if not a little less, to completely pay out of pocket and do a birth center birth um, it's still going to be a little bit less than we would be spending even with insurance paying a portion um, for our hospital birth. <laughs> uh, crazy, right? Why even have insurance? But um, that also, if we did the hospital birth and insurance paid, that would totally take care of our deductibles. So if we needed anything else for the rest of the year, it's pretty much covered because we've spent um, close to our out-of-pocket max. So, um, or not only our deductible, but our close to our out-of-pocket max as well. So that's what we're deciding between right now. We really love the midwives at our practice, but you know, when I had my second daughter, they didn't have enough midwives, so we didn't even get to have one anyway. We're just trying to work this out. Um, they will allow us to have doulas as of right now at the hospital, which is something I couldn't have with my second daughter. Um, I don't know you guys, I just I just don't want to have to worry about whether or not I can have a peaceful room in a tub, you know? I feel like I would just rather not worry about that. So I'm going to let you know what um, we decide. You guys let me know what you would decide. You know, what would you do in my situation? Um, I'd love to hear about that. I know we have to make our own decision, but I would just 
love to hear your insights and feedback and all of that good stuff. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. I know that I've gotten tripped up on my words a lot today. You guys, I told you, I'm foggy. <laughs> my brain is like purely decorative at this point. It just doesn't seem to work at all. But I do love you so much. I hope you have a very blessed day. I thank you for being here. And yeah, I will see you guys next time.